Hey guys, Joe here at JP Details and welcome to episode 6 of the world's most ridiculous concourse level detail and after almost 150 hours of work, we'll finally be able to ceramic coat the paintwork to protect the focus for 5 years. If you haven't watched the previous 5 episodes to this crazy detailing series where we've transformed my own Focus RS from a standard looking pony into a show winning stallion, then be sure to check them out. We washed and decontaminated the focus in episode 1, wet sanded the paintwork via a two stage sanding process in episode 2, compounded the paintwork in episode 3, refined the paintwork in episode 4, and we then did the final preparation stages in episode 5. All episodes of this series have gone into great detail about the complete process to get the focus to a concourse standard. I do plan to enter this car into as many concourse or show and shine events that I'm physically able to get the car to. If you are new to the channel then please consider subscribing and if at any point throughout this video that you do feel as if it warrants a thumbs up then feel free to give the like button a tickle. If you haven't watched any of my other videos before then you should know that my preferred ceramic coating will be G-Technic Crystal Serum Light topped with XOV4. This is known as the CSL Black Treatment and it consists of 3 layers in total and will provide the vehicle with 5 years of unbeatable protection. I did get in touch with G-Technic prior to applying the coating and I did ask if they would be able to send out a special order of the G-Technic Ultra Coating but due to not being a G-Technic accredited detailer they declined. After the car was finished I actually spoke to the head trainer at G-Technic and he said if you'd have spoken to me mate I'd have had some sent out. I would comfortably say that I have achieved around a 70% reduction in the orange peel and give or take 99.9% .9 of defect removal across the entire vehicle. Not bad for 150 hours of labour. In terms of the orange peel that is still present on the paintwork and why I didn't feel comfortable in taking it any further back than I already did, then please check out the wet sanding and compounding episodes as I have already fully explained the issues that I found with the Ford paint. Stage 1 of the ceramic coating application is going to be a single layer of G-Technic Crystal Serum Light. This alone is going to protect the paintwork for between 3-5 to five years and it will offer the focus a seriously tough base coat of protection. Application of the coating in itself is rather simple, but what it requires that not all people would be capable of is the pure patience and eye for the detail to make sure that it is applied correctly. Failure to follow the correct application of this coating and failure to ensure its correct buffing or removal process without monitoring the results would result in a poor application process. When you say it's all in the prep, this would be correct, but the detail can be ruined very easily within the closing stages of the detail. I have seen a few poorly ceramic coated cars in the past and it often makes me wonder if the guy applying it forgot to take his glasses to work. By having a purposefully designed detailing studio to work in with decent lighting to brighten up all areas of the vehicle, combined with being a patient and obsessive detailer, allows me to monitor my results throughout the entire process which will mean that I will achieve a professional finish. Geotechnic Panel Wipe has removed all of the polish oils and residue from the painted surfaces and I have checked my level of correction across the entire vehicle and after a few select areas were given a little more attention, the paintwork is perfectly prepared. Apply 3 pipettes of the CSL coating to essentially prime the Geotechnic Finger Foam applicator pad and where possible apply the coating in straight lines. Although by doing circular motions it does allow you to spread the product a little further which isn't a bad thing and this is mentioned by G-Technic. Going forward with the amount of ceramic that you add to the pad is going to depend on the size of the panel that you plan to treat. Far less coating is required for the smaller panels whereas much more product is needed for areas like the roof, doors and bonnet. The key to a successful ceramic coating application is to keep your working section dialed into a manageable size. Don't try and cover various panels or even singular large panels in one go as you don't want to run the risk of the coating curing before you've had a chance to remove the excess. By keeping your working section to a manageable size is going to allow the correct removal process to be done in good time and to ensure a professional result is always achieved. 
Apply the correct amount of ceramic to the finger foam applicator and this will usually be between 1 to 3 pipettes depending on the size of the panel. Apply the coating to the centre of your panel and begin to work your way out. Leave a 3 inch margin around all panel edges to ensure that the coating doesn't seep into the gaps. If there is one bug bearer with the training days that I hold, I'll tell people the exact same thing and even demonstrate the process first and then the first thing that they do is start in the middle of the panel and then go straight to the edges. Lo and behold, there is now ceramic coating dripping into the gaps and crevices and there's me like, you've just gone and done the one thing that I told you not to do. Keep the bulk of the product in the middle of your panel and work your way out. To finally coat the 3 inch margin you can run your applicator across the middle of the panel to collect more product and then coat the outside margin. This way there will be far less product within the pad to potentially overflow down and into the crevices. Towards the end of treating each panel I'll go over all areas for a final time which will ensure an even covering of the coating which will make the removal process a little easier. If you feel uncomfortable with treating areas like a complete card door in one go, then by all means you can treat it in halves. I know what I'm doing with ceramic coatings, however if I was trying this coating for the first time I would certainly knock the working sections down to something a little smaller. Now that the coating has been applied, it's also been smoothed out, we are ready to immediately begin removing the excess. Take your first microfiber towel and continue to gently wipe over all areas. Not only will this begin to remove the excess product, but it will also spread the product a little further to make sure that all areas are coated. Flip the first towel a few times and continue to wipe the panel until you are happy that most of the excess residue has been removed. Take the second microfiber towel and continue to gently wipe the paintwork and after being flipped two or three times, the excess coating should be fully removed. At this point I'll take my ScanGrip Sunmatch 2 and inspect my results on a final wipe over. Look out for any high spots in the coating, lighter or darker patches, smudges or smears. At this point if any excess product isn't removed it will dry rock solid within the next 10 minutes and it would require machine polishing to remove. Checking your results as you go is very important and I'll essentially make sure that I'm happy with each panel before moving to the next. Another thing to remember which is incredibly important is to check that all excess residue has been completely removed from the surrounding panels. All it takes and trust me it is a very common thing to happen is for one of those microfiber towels with moist ceramic coating residue on to glide over a neighbouring panel and infect it with ceramic coating residue. When wiping the excess coating off, slightly increase the areas that you are wiping over and again increase them for a second time with your second towel. When checking your results, you will also need to check, let's say a 3 to 5 inch margin around those neighbouring panels. Common sense does fall into this, and to be honest, after you've done your first ceramic coating job, you will know exactly what I mean. Removing the ceramic coating residue is not the same as buffing a polish or a wax. It's a far more delicate process, in fact the only force that you need to make is just enough pressure to make sure that the microfiber towel is flat against the paintwork. If you do notice any areas where the ceramic coating is cured a bit quicker than you were expecting, you can try applying a little more product to the area and wiping immediately. However, it would depend on how quickly you spot the defect in the first place. Different types of paintwork can react differently to the ceramic coatings. Usually the only time I ever have issues is with resprayed areas and sometimes they can be a right pain. This takes us back to one of the first episodes in the series where we measured the depth of the paint at which point we should have noticed if any panels had been resprayed. Bear those panels in mind when it comes to the ceramic coating stage and I would definitely recommend treating those panels in smaller sections and monitor the results a bit more closely. If you are wondering why I've left the tape on the plastic and rubber surfaces of the RS, well it's quite simply to make sure that they don't become ceramic coated. I'll be using specific products for these areas which will be dealt with towards the end of the detail. So what are the benefits of Gtanic Crystal Serum Light? Well it forms a durable high gloss slick to the touch chemically bonding inorganic layer of 9H optically clear ceramic. 
This offers fantastic resistance to wash swirls and gloss levels will remain in the upper 90th percentile for significantly longer, compared to traditional paint sealants and cleaning your car will be far easier. It will protect against UV fading and on its own it will last for between 3 to 5 years. It's very user friendly, provided you've got a keen eye for the detail. CSL can be applied as a standalone coating, however for the ultimate hydrophobic performance, overcoating with EXO V4 is highly recommended. In short, CSL offers the best possible swirl mark and chemical resistance from a prosumer grade product, bearing in mind that G-Technic are the longest established ceramic coating manufacturer in the world. It's important to note that CSL must be applied indoors and the vehicle must remain indoors for at least 12 hours after application. With the first layer of CSL laid down, you will then need to complete the next layer between 3 to 12 hours after completion of the first. Say for example it took me the best part of 3 hours to apply CSL to the focus, well this means that I can simply jump straight back in for the first layer of EXO, providing that you do the coats in the same order. While CSL provides our vehicle with an extremely tough base coat of protection to protect against all sorts of natural and industrial contamination inclusive of the swarm mark resistance, in an ideal world we are going to need something with a little more water repellency to put on over the top. G-Technic EXO V4 is the latest version of the trailblazing EXO ceramic coating. This product has set new standards in a coating's gloss, slickness and hydrophobic properties since its release. Unlike the old version which is a hybrid inorganic coating, the new version is a purely non-hybrid organic coating. This quite simply means that the formula cures much harder and is therefore most importantly more durable and resistant to water spotting. I must admit it isn't the easiest ceramic coating on the market to apply but from the eyes of a unit based detailer it's the best option for delivering long term results for my customers. As a standalone coating, EXO will last for 2 years, it's chemically resistant from pH 3 to pH 13, it's incredibly hydrophobic and it repels water like no other coating. It provides an ultra slick and deep gloss finish with unparalleled water and dirt repellency. The application for this coating follows the same method as CSL whereby you apply the product to a manageable working section at a time. Apply 2 or 3 pipettes of the coating onto your G-Technic finger foam applicator and where possible apply to the paintwork in straight lines. I've got to admit and this is the recommended method for applying G-Technic Ultra is to actually apply the coating in controlled circular motions. This allows you to spread the product further and it will reduce the risk of dislodging any semi-cured ceramic coating particles of CSL. If you run the applicator backwards and forwards over an uncoated section, uncoated with EXO by the way, you can actually feel a certain level of resistance when the pad starts to become drier. When you apply the coating in small circular motions, there is very little in terms of resistance due to how the coating is being laid down. If you have the eye for the detail, or in this case the feel for the detail, you'll see what I mean. If you don't, then best of luck with applying this experience level 3 layer coating system. One way to combat this straight line application approach would be to keep the pad heavily saturated to make sure that there is zero resistance, but obviously due to the amount of product that would be required this isn't the professional approach. The removal process of EXO is exactly the same as CSL whereby you use the two towel technique, expand your working section with each towel and thoroughly check your results inclusive of the neighbouring panels. Treat each panel at a time and then tick them off when you are happy with the results. As you should have noticed with the footage I have sped it all up simply to give you a gist of the complete process. All three layers are applied with the same technique that we saw with the lengthy explanation with the first coat of CSL. Feel free to go back in the video and listen to the CSL application for a second time and then replicate this process for all three layers. One thing with detailing which goes for every aspect of the industry, when you've practiced this on a few cars you will begin to understand and you will no doubt develop your own technique, method and style. My biggest recommendation is to get stuck in. The only thing with the CSL black treatment is that it does need to be done indoors and the vehicle will need to remain indoors for the following 12 hours to allow the coating to fully cure. Failure to follow the advised guidelines set out by G-Technic when it comes to applying their coatings could result in an underperforming ceramic coating system. 
I do offer training days where we can go through the complete process on your own vehicle in quite a bit more detail, but depending on how many days you went for, may or may not mean that we'd have enough time to get the entire vehicle done. I've already had a few guys so far that don't have access to their own garage and we have actually detailed their car together whilst offering a certain level of training at the same time. Please visit the training day page on the JP Details website for more information and feel free to check out the online store for products and merch. In short, prepare the vehicle to suit your own standard which should include a full wash, full decontamination, paintwork correction or enhancement to be completed to suit your own desires. Panel wipe with IPA then apply each layer of ceramic following the guidelines followed in this video, give each layer at least 3 hours to cure before applying the next. Check your results as you go with a trusty light source and try to enjoy yourself. The CSL black coating system, i.e. Crystal Serum Light and XO V4 isn't the easiest ceramic coating to do, but it's certainly the best. G-Technic are the longest established ceramic coating manufacturer in the world and they are the ones that originally set the standard for all other companies. I'm not endorsed by G-Technic or being paid to sniff their asses, I just really like their products. Unfortunately for you guys, I'm going to hold off on showing you any before and afters in this episode as I've still got a few final tasks left to do which includes putting the car back together. In the next episode of this crazy detailing series, we'll be putting the car back together and doing the finishing touches. Before and afters will be obligatory and I'll be summing up the entire detail in the final episode. The car is now protected for 5 years and it will be super duper water repellent and incredibly glossy when it goes outside for the first time in 3 weeks. This car sure has been an adventure doing the detail on and I still have lots to talk about. As always thank you for watching, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and feel free to give the like button a tickle for my huge amount of effort. Give me a follow on Facebook and Instagram, just search JP Details and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.